So here is the engine replacement, the engine I'm gonna drop in. Visually it has nothing more than uh, what the engine, the car already has. This hose outlet is uh, rotten out just like mine, suggesting that it, this engine wasn't running on antifreeze. The good thing is that the head gasket is not leaking, at least uh, on the outside. Nothing tells me that uh, it's not leaking oil into the cylinders. Um, what else? I'm gonna replace this seal on the crankshaft. Yeah, it's a really old engine. It's nothing that uh, I will buy, but um, if you have an old car and want a replacement for the engine, that's uh, all you can get. That's uh, cost a lot, if you ask me. Some sludge build up inside. Sludge. Hmm, I don't like it, but anyways. The intake part of the cylinder head doesn't look like it has sludge inside. That looks good. Um, I don't know, we will see. The oil filter looks like uh, it has been changed compared to mine which was the original filter that was installed on the car factory um, those are GM plugs yeah GM plugs maybe the original or the... oh where is this one? Um, anyways this is the 98 that's a 98 they are stamped yeah this, this engine is as bad as the one I have but uh, at least it's not leaking on the outside. This one was cleaned, otherwise uh, originally it was uh, very nasty. Yeah, you you can see the difference here that it's leaking oil and water on the outside. I got no idea. Anyway, so I've got the the other engine, uh, hoping to get a turbo in it or a supercharged, but. I can tell that uh, it has uh, by a few hundred, better not say like half a million kilometers on each, so that won't be a good idea. The compression won't be good. Maybe the steady compression will look like it's uh, good, but uh, if you add load to it at uh, high RPMs, and the whole compression uh, thing changes. Anyways, it, it leaks uh, on the cylinder rings. So yeah, the the turbocharged project on this engine will be scrapped. At least I've got uh, another exhaust manifold so to play with uh, adding a turbo to it. Yeah. Let's start stripping this engine. Just take a look at all this oil that uh, was leaking outside of the the engine block and the gearbox as well. Now I was cleaning this uh, engine quite often and it had such a bad leak from the head gasket that you can see the results. Look at all this rust that gets out of the radiator. Damn. Trying to Cool down the engine because, like I said, don't have the time. This is the worst part of uh, this engine cooling systems. This hose outlet, which uh, tends to rot, like you see it here. Now the other engine's uh, outlet is not uh, that much better, but uh, I've got a new thermostat cover. Uh, well, I used one uh, that the guy who sold me the engine gave me, and um, yeah, I think this one is going to be all right. Those uh, melts used on such things are like the worst crap you can have on a car engine and a car in general. What the heck? When I was removing those two screws, I noticed that the this sensor was uh, unplugged. Hmm, that is weird. But it doesn't seem like uh, it had a pin, a locking pin. 
Now a lot more stuff has been stripped, has been removed. Another thing I noticed was uh, that uh, this outlet was almost completely blocked. It had a big, big chunk of rust here and other gunk. So part of the overheating issue could be due to these blockades here. can see the debris flying out. Another major blockade and uh, rotten hose outlets on the throttle body. This thing goes up here, turning water or something. It's completely blocked. I doubt there, there was some, uh, there, there was any water flowing through this thing. However, the intake manifold looks good inside. It was uh, cleaned before like five years and still looks good. Well, now I am officially tired. Uh, those screws, I mean like two screws on the head were uh, quite a mess to get out. Let's see. Uh, yeah, some have oil but uh, some have uh, rust like this well what's this thing what the heck something pink like uh, washing machine detergent or something Oh, it smells sweet. Maybe it's old antifreeze that leaked inside there for some reason. Hmm, that smells nice. Oh, yeah. Anyways, let's see now. Oh, the interesting thing is that uh, it splits on two, two parts here, maybe. Those screws were for... Uh, nope. Or not. It has more screws inside? Nope. No, that's all. Now I'm off with the head and uh, what the heck, now the plot thickens. Look at that uh, head gas, it doesn't look factory. In fact, I'm uh, quite sure this was an aftermarket uh, head gasket and uh, if you see the cylinder walls, they look like they are uh, cross-sanded, uh, which makes me think that um, there was uh, some sort of uh, work that uh, was being done on the cylinders, perhaps for uh, changing the piston rings or something like that. So this gives me the feel that um, the performance of uh, this engine will be better than on the other one, despite that uh, this head gasket is blown. I mean, it got me really surprised. I can't believe it. But look at how nasty this head gasket is. Yeah, definitely aftermarket. Damn. I had no idea about it. Well, the cylinder of three looks like a glass, has a mirror finish, that's uh, really bad. This one looks better. Now, I have no idea if those blocked passages are just how this head gasket was, or if they were just gunks of uh, rice or something. The head gasket looks like it has some uh, sort of a small hole where you see all these uh, huge uh, mark. But I don't know if it was designed like that. The only thing I know is that I'm not sure that uh, the engine was uh, being cooled properly using this head gasket. Anyways, I'm gonna continue with the engine swap. Well, last last thing for today is that uh, yeah, it gets dark. It's getting dark, so yeah, have to go. Um, uh, this water pump from the old engine looks surprisingly good. 
I've never changed it. I have never changed it since 2013 that I've got this car. The water pump was uh, already in. You know, the bearing doesn't have any play. The impeller looks amazing. Only this uh, surface rust. I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna use this one on the other engine. Because if you see, you see on the side where you can. This warp pump definitely looks older. So this is the second day with me messing with this thing. Uh, when I've removed the engine, I noticed that um, the gearbox uh, leaking problem uh, is located right here on the on the output shaft uh, seal. So I have to replace that before I do anything. So I'm now ready to drop the new engine, new engine in. I clean the clutch and uh, the clutch disc and the plate, sanded it a little bit. Still good for quite a few miles. I put the, the flywheel from the engine uh, the car al already had uh, as uh, you know, it, it looks like uh, it was replaced sometime, so it still looks it still looks like new. I had quite a lot of trouble removing this water pump. This is from the replacement engine. Yeah, I can say that uh, I have started not enjoying in, enjoying in the whole procedure, but anyways, I'm not gonna replace those seals. Maybe when I will replace the disc of the clutch. So <coughs> yeah, maybe I will put some additive that will uh, stop any leaks that will work for now. The oil pan that uh, the the engine that I've got had uh, uh, had uh, you know its uh, thread on the drain bolt stripped so I put the other one from the engine I've had uh, which was uh, re-tapped and had a torque screw so yeah that's gonna work fine. Hmm. That's my block rusty put a new timing belt retimed the, the the camshaft and um, yeah it's now good to go along with the other engine I've got uh, a used plate and a disc hoping that uh, they're gonna be better than mine but I was wrong no, I've got this for free so yeah whatever the plate is almost the same and the disc has the wear indicator at uh, one millimeter or so this is much better like three millimeters or so on this pulley was a pain in the ass to get out. Damn, it was so tight for no reason. No, I've used several bra breaker bars and uh, I almost had no success. So to to proceed doing the whole thing, I locked the flywheel with uh, locking grips here and uh, I've used a huge breaker bar. So after like two to three hours, I managed to get it out. So yeah. All these are some unfortunate a events for uh, today, the second day of the engine swap. With me trying to align the whole thing, the engine had got stuck on the uh, a gearbox axle. It was quite a mess, but now it's in. Now all I have to do is uh, connect all the all these wires, uh, pipes, and such things. 